Shalom, 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 Israel. I want to start off first and foremost, giving the course all honor, exaltation, glory, um, everything that we can give on the highest note to Yahweh, our Father, the only God that exists on the earth. And I do so in the name of his only begotten son, Hamashiach Yahweh Shah, um, the Savior who he sent for the remission of our sins and our iniquities. Um, and today, um, you know, I got a little time from work and I want to be able to do this um, this uh, quick little video. And it's called Calling Upon the Lord. Um, these are the things that are uh, very critical. And I've been going through things in my life, my, my own personal life through the spirit. Um, and these are the tips. A lot of things you're dealing with anxiety, um, stress, um, you know, depression, all these different spirits and um, different things that can attack you. Um, the Most High uh, does these things to get us better, um, to prepare us for uh, the future, right? Um, and a lot of us can't see that in, the, in in those moments, but the Most High is preparing us for the things to come, right? Um, and if we can't overcome these small uh, daily things in our life and these things that oppress us, and um and, and these small battles, how can we overcome things like Jacob's trouble? Um, things to come um, even before Jacob's trouble um, when things get, you know, worse and worse. Um, so we have to deal with these things. And um, the video is called Upon the Lord because this is what you have to do. Let me get this first precept. Um, it's Psalm chapter 118 and verse 5. It says, I called upon the Lord in distress. The Lord ang and, the Lord and the Lord answered me and set me in a large place. So when you're going through moments of distress, a lot of times when anxiety, depression, stress, um, it always wants to put you into that um, uh, mode of worrying. Um, always thinking the worst. Always thinking, um, you know, the world's ending. You're about to die. Um, there's no hope. And and that's nothing but an evil spirit. And that's a, another way for Satan and demons to attack you is through this avenue, Right. And we have to call upon the Lord. All the most High wants us to do is to call upon him. In our moments of anguish, we, the most High wants us to acknowledge him, right? In the moments when we're down, we, the most High wants us to look towards him, right? Not go about things our own way, not thinking we can get ourselves out of these things, but call upon him. In these moments where you're going through stress, you're going through anxiety, call upon the Lord. Call upon Yahweh, man, in the name of his son, Yahweh Shah. Right, and hope upon him. Know that he's the one that can get you out of these situations. Um, and this is scripture on uh, everyone you know goes to, but it's really deeper once you understand it. And this is Proverbs chapter three and verse five. It says, "Trust in Yahweh with all thy heart, and lean not unto thy own understanding." So the key is there is to trust in the Most High with all your heart. That's your mind, right? And lean not into your own understanding. This isn't just talking about precepts and scriptures, right? This is talking about when you in the thing, when you out dealing with your daily life, it's easy to start leaning into your own understanding, thinking you can get yourself out of situations, man. Thinking you, you know, uh, when you're dealing with anxiety, thinking um, or stress, thinking other things can help you, uh, help you out. Well, these other things may be able to help, but you got to come to the Lord first, right? That's the very key. And it says, in all thy ways, acknowledge him. This is the key what the Most High wants from us. He wants us to acknowledge him. That's what the Most High wants. If I can simplify the truth, and I say this a lot to brothers and sisters, if I can simplify the truth, what the Most High wants us to do is when we have nothing else to count on, he wants us to hope in him, trust in him, believe in him. When there's nothing else, no other ways, right? Right? That's what we have to do in our daily life, man. When we're going through our daily struggles, like anxiety, stress, depression. These are the things the Most High puts on us for us to be able to overcome these things, man. Right? And the Most High loves us enough to chastise us, to put us through these things, to make us better in the end. Right? And you think in those moments, man, something's wrong with me. Dang, man, I can't get over this. And yeah, you feel like that. Because these spirits are attacking you to make you feel that way. Right? But that's why you got to overcome these little battles, man. And you overcome not through yourself, not through your own strength, but through the most high. Verse um, 
6 says, In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. And I even give verse 7 here. It says, Be not wise in thy own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. So you got to stop being wise in your own eyes, thinking that the things from the world can deliver you and trust solely in the Most High God, right? And that's what the Most High wants us to do. And when you're in these times of stress and anguish, when everything feels, and you know, a lot of men go through this, man. We, a lot of us go through this and, you know, we ain't, we can't tell nobody. A lot of people you get, you can't tell, you know, a lot of times you got to open up, man, and talk to certain brothers, talk to your, um, and if you have a wife of understanding, talk to your wife, right? You know, and you ain't got to come, you know, all sobbing and crying and doing all that, but you can come in a way in which you're showing your emotion, man. The most I gave you, uh, things like this to help you out in your life. Your wife's a help. Brothers and sisters that the Lord put around you. These are helps that the Lord put in your life for you to, um, and, and everyone's going through it. That's what you're going to find out. A lot of people are going through these things themselves, right? And no, and there's no doctor you can go to to get these things solved, man. You know, it's a lot of people go to therapists, um, go to, um, different type of, uh, psychology or different type of, um, you know, different things they meddle in, right? But nothing's going to really solve the root problem. The root problem is having that trust and faith in the most high, right? C to go through all these things that you go through in your life. Um, let me get this. This is Psalms chapter nine and verse nine. And, the, and, and it says, the Lord, Yahweh, also will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee. For thou, Yahweh, has not forsaken them that seek thee. So we got to understand that. The Most High is a refuge for us in the times of trouble. That means when we're going through things, we got to believe in that. He's a refuge. Who's who we can hope in? When you're going through those anxiety attacks, or when you're going through times of deep stress, or you you sort of in a depression mood, right? You got to call upon the Most High, right? And understand that He is a, a, a stronghold. He's something you can hope in. He's something you can trust in, something you can rely on. And once you show that belief in him, once you show that faith in him, the most high will get you and deliver you away from these things, man. He'll put that different spirit on you, man. Right? He'll have that um, spirit flee from you. Right? But you got to call upon him. That's the very key. Let's get Psalms chapter 18 and verse 6. And it says, In my distress, I called upon Yahweh. And cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry came before him, even in his ears. So, once you call upon the Lord, the Most High is going to hear those things, man. He's going to hear it. Why? Because you're trusting him. And we're going to get to the scripture, and I'll go ahead and quote part of it now. Is that when does the Lord ever fail someone that trusted in him, man? Who put their hope in him, right? Read the scriptures and see for yourself when the Lord. When the Lord, um, whenever people was up against the wall, right? Whenever these prophets or men of the Lord or people that are women of the Lord, right? Whenever they was uh, bound up and there was no other way out, right? The Lord gave them a way out, but only when they solely put their trust in them, right? Only when they s trusted in his ways. You read about Judith, right? What did she do? She, um, no other ways. The uh, destruction of Nicodemus on coming, Right? And pure, I'm coming, right? These are the, um, you read about what she did when she was um, cornered. When there was no other way, what did she do? She put her trust in the most high. And, if she, and she said, if I perish, I perish, right? And that's what you have to do in your daily life, man, right? Um, Maccabees, right? They're cornered, right? And what they do, they put their hope, they hope in the Lord, right? Hope in the most high's mercy, Right? In your distress, call upon them and don't forget that because it's easy to forget that. And in fact, these demons and um, these spirits that are sent on high um, don't want you to call upon the Lord, man. You'll find it's very hard to call upon the Lord and stay focused on calling upon the Lord during these times of high stress and high anxiety, right? And high uh, um, depression, right? That's why it's key to do these things and to focus in on the Lord, right? Um, this is Psalms chapter 116, verse 3. It says, The sorrows of death compassed me, and the pains of hell got hold upon me. 
I found trouble and sorrow. That's what a lot of us go through. We're dealing with anxiety. You feel like death is around you. Um, stress, you feel like there's a lot put on you. Depression, you feel like, um, you know, you feel like uh, it's it for you. You feel like there's no point of living, right? But verse four, what is the point? What is the point? What is the point of this lesson? We're reading again. It says, then called I upon the name of the Yahweh. Oh, Yahweh, I beseech thee, deliver my soul. Gracious is the is Yahweh and righteous. Yea, our God is merciful. The Lord preserveth the simple. I was brought low and he helped me. That's the point. The Most High is looking for you to call upon him for help. Don't forget to do that when you're going through these things, man. You're going around, you mean mugging, you got a, a, a mad face, um, you frowning up, and you forgetting to call upon the Lord, man. That's that demon that's on you, man. Same thing with anger, right? When you get angry, you don't want to talk to nobody, you separate, you, you know, you frowning up like, hey, look, that's what, that's the spirit that's put on you, man. When you should be calling upon the Lord for him to relinquish you of that spirit, right? It says, verse 7, return unto thy rest, O my soul. For the Lord have dealt bountifully with thee. For thou hast delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. So the Most High is upholding us in this thing, man. He, you woke up this morning, you could breathe, right? You could talk. Your brain still works where you could, you know, you could hear communication. You could hear people and understand how to communicate with them, man. You can move your arms and your legs. Your, your tongue still, you know how important, if, you, if your tongue doesn't work, you can't even communicate. Most of still has your tongue working. You know, you can, you, you breathing. When you was at night on your bed, you weren't thinking about breathing. You weren't thinking about your heart beating, right? But the Lord preserved you, man. The Lord is with us, right? So with us that he gave you and exposed you the way of truth and knowledge and understanding, right? So we have to trust in him and lift up and exalt him, Right? In the times of, uh, 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 of when we're going through things, right? Or when we're going through bad moments, because that's going to happen, man. Nobody said in this truth that you weren't going to go through things, man. And a lot of brothers and sisters fall out of the truth because they think they come into the truth that anxiety and depression and um, uh, stress and things are going to go away. In fact, when you fall in the ways of the Most High, these things attack you 10 times more. And when they attack you 10 times more, that's why you have to call upon the defense. And the defense comes not from you. Or from man, or some guy with a, a, a book saying, Yeah, I agree with that, buddy. Yeah, everything you do. You know, that's because that's all therapists do, right? Right? But you have to call upon the Most High, right? And that's the key to everything. That's the key to that anxiety, it's that fear, right? Of what's going to happen. We can't, hey, man, Most High didn't give us the spirit of fear. We have to learn how to trust in Him and hope in Him, right? And through that, we overcome that fear because we have no control of anything anyways, right? The Most High is controlling everything, right? And he's going to have the things fall whithersoever he wants them to, right? Um, let me get this. This is Lam Lamentations chapter 3 and verse 53. It says, they have cut off my life in the dungeon and cast a stone upon me. Waters flowed over my head. Then I said, I am cut off. And that's what a, a spirit, that's what these spirits of depression, anxiety, and stress want you to do. They want you to feel like you're you're being cut off, right? Man, the most I ain't going to abandon me. There's no point. All the stuff I've done wrong, all the things I've done, the Lord's going to kill me now. Oh, man, I'm, I'm out of what's not even exist anymore. Man, all the stress I'm going through. Hey, look, you, hey, these are the feelings, and this is what the spirit, that's how we know it's sent from, uh, it's evil. Right? That's how we know it's these evil spirits that attack us. Right? And it says, I called upon thy name, O Yahweh, out of the low dungeon. Right? So just like when Jeremiah in Lamentations, he's calling upon the Most High when he's in his low dungeon. You have to call upon the Most High when you're in your low dungeon, in your life. Right? When you when you, when you you feel like there's no other way out. Right? When you feel like it's high levels of stress and anxiety and pressure. Right? Hey, when you look at Yahweh, he was a man of sorrows, right? When you read Isaiah 53. And what did he do when he was in moments of stress? Um, when you're going through anger, when you're going through um, as anxiety and uh, depression. Hey, look, Yahweh was going through all those things, man. And what did he do? He separated himself and prayed, right? He called upon the name of the Lord. 
And he, he did these things to show forth us an example of how we should live our lives when we're going through things. And it says, and a and a, um, a serve is not greater than his master. So you're going to go through those things too, right? And it says, thou hast heard my voice, hide not thy ear at my breathing at my cry. Thou drewest near in the day that I called upon thee. So the Lord is going to draw near you when you call upon him. Why? Because he knows when you call upon the Lord in these moments of, of anguish and stress, that, no, that the Lord knows you believe in him. That's a sign of your belief and your faith and your hope. It says, um, O Lord, thou hast pleaded the causes of my soul. Thou hast redeemed my life. And through that, the most I will redeem you from those situations. Right? Now, let me get this. This is Psalm chapter 145 and verse 18. This is going to be a little quicker video because yeah, I got to get back to work here soon. But I wanted to make sure I get this to brothers and sisters because we all going through these things. And we need these seeds of life planted in us to get through our daily um, grind. Right? Psalms 145 and 18 says, The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him. To all that call upon him in truth. So the Most High is nigh upon all those that call upon him. The Most High is with you if you call upon him, man. He's near you. Because what does that show forth? That faith. That belief. Right? And that's the last thing these demons and devils and spirits want you to do when they're attacking you. Right? And it says, He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. He will also hear their cry and will save them. The Lord preserveth all them that love him, but all the wicked will he destroy. So the Most High will hear your cry and he will save you out of that situation. And I ain't just talking about salvation when the chariots come and, and, and Yahweh shot comes, man. This is talking about getting saved out of your daily situations you're dealing with, man. The daily anguishes, the daily anger, the daily pains and grinds of life. Right? You need this to uplift you, man. So let's get this Isaiah chapter 55 and 6. Another one of my favorite scriptures. And a lot of scriptures get quotes a lot. But you got these scriptures, a couple of these scriptures, you have to focus in on and understand the underlying meaning of these things. Right? Isaiah 55 and 6. It says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. So your thoughts. You got to uh, gotta forsake your thoughts and your ways during these times of uh, the anxiety, depression, right? Anger, right? Stress. You got to, those are all your thoughts. You got to forsake your way and your thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. So you got to return to the Most High and seek him. Right. In these times of stress, verse eight, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways. My ways, said the Lord, for as heavens are higher than the earth. So are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. So the most I can deliver you out of all these things, man. These things that we dealing with in our life. The Lord said he hey, he, he don't go. Hey, he can deliver you from those. Your thoughts aren't his thoughts. Right. The most I ain't sitting around going through anxiety and depression and stress. Right. He didn't make um, uh, he, he, he he's the creator of all things. And he created us with these things to go through these so-called emotions or spirits or things that go through us. Right. For us to overcome, uh, overcome them and become better in the end. You're not going to become better if you end up subject to these spirits. Right. You get depressed and you in a, a hole for 30 days. Right. And wondering why you about to kill yourself. Hey, brother, you let that spirit overcome you. Right. You weren't calling upon the Lord. You weren't seeking him. You wasn't fasting. You wasn't praying. Some, sp some spirits only go away through fasting and prayer. That's what Yahweh shall say. Right? And these things ain't overnight cures, man. Some of these things take time and focus and look into the root cause. Right? Which ultimately is going to go back to the fear of the Most High and understanding that you got to call upon him when the times of, when you feel like there's no way out. Um... Let's get this. This is Romans chapter 10 and verse 13, right? And it says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, man. And you got to believe in that, man. 
And you know, they Christians and people read these scriptures without understanding what this means. They call upon the Lord, man. Call upon Yahweh, man, in the name of his only begotten son, Yahweh Shah. When you in these situations, if you out in public, hey, go away and, and focus on yourself for a second. Or, hey, you don't have to face the east, man. You ain't got to sit up and, you know, look at your um, phone and trying to find the east. Hey, man, say the prayers within your head. Say these meditations in your head, man. Meditate upon the good things, right? Upon the Most High's word. People around you don't even have to know, man. The Most High hears them. He's with you. He hears them. You think the Most High doesn't hear your thoughts? When you're thinking good things and praying in your head to him, yes, he will hear you, right? And this Acts 2 and 21, another scripture about calling upon me to be saved. It says, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ye men of Israel. He said, who is he talking to? Hear these words, Hamashiach uh, of Nazareth, a man, uh, my, my bad, Yahweh of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. Him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, whom God have raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he shall be holding of it. For David speaketh concerning him. I foresaw the Lord always before my face. For he is on my right hand that I should not be moved. You got to put yourself in that mentality. This is what David, when he was talking about Yahusha. Therefore did my heart rejoice and my tongue was glad. Moreover, also my flesh shall rest in hope. You got your flesh has to rest in hope. Right? And it says, because thou would not leave my soul in hell, neither will thou suffer the holy one to see corruption. That's, you know, that's talking about Yahusha, but you got to understand the Most High ain't going to leave you in hell. He ain't going to leave you in the, we believe in the resurrection. We believe that we can overcome things, even death, right? But not through our strength and through our power, but through the power of the Most High, right? So put your mind there. And it's hard to do it in those moments. And I know it is, right? But you got to put your mind and you got to separate and focus and meditate on it, right? Our forefathers went out in the field and meditated, Right? And meditating on the good. Sometimes you got to do that. Like I always said, sometimes you got to separate yourself and go out and pray. And, you know, sometimes you got to do a fast. Right. Sometimes you got to you got to sort of do spiritual things that um, uh, to counteract spiritual things. man. This ain't a physical about this ain't mental. You can't just take a Xanax and um, uh, some of these pills that um, these other nations or uh, even your own people will give you to try to overcome these things, man. And even if you get some herbs or something that helps with um, anxiety or, you you know, you get certain herbs and stuff that help with anxiety, help with stress, help with depression. You got to understand that you got to trust in the most high for those herbs to even work, for them to even take their effect, for them to help you out. Or wine. You know, the most high made wine for stresses and anxiety and depression sometimes, man. He said it's good for a man to make a man glad. Right. If you do, if you take it in, uh, in wisdom. Right. But you got to understand those things work, but only when you hope in the most high first. And I wanted to get that scripture real quick, man, because there's certain herbs out there. There's certain um, uh, the most I made the medic medicines from the earth. Right. And there's certain things out there that you can um, uh, certain um, uh, um, herbs and uh, different uh, leaves and, and uh, different um, fruits and, and different things that help with your anxiety. Right, that calm your cortisol levels and all those things and getting on the physical level, right? But those things don't get to the root cause. The root cause is going back to the Most High and hoping in them. And these are those things that help you also, right? The Most High made these medications on the earth for you to use them, but not to trust in them. The scriptures say, uh, don't trust. Uh, you can't just trust in those things because if you do, you'll fall in, fall into the hands of the physician and see if he helps you with these things. Now you got to fall in the hands of the Most High, and those things will work also. But you got to have that faith in him for those things to take effect, for them to do what, uh, for them to accomplish. Even the scripture said the physicians back in the uh, ancient days in Sirach, I, I think that's Sirach 38th chapter, you, hey, they would um they would pray to the Most High that they urge would work. That's the same thing you got to do. You got to pray that these things help you out a little bit, right? You going in that room having a bad day, you you know, you, know, you take some certain, um, certain um, herb, dandelion or uh, 
they, I forgot the names of them, man. There's different herbs that come from seeds that come, that's holy, the most I made for these specific reasons. Wine, right? Certain things that, you know, calm you down. But you got to hope in the most out of these things help you out. But look, we, I'm not even going to go to that scripture. You, you can read um, the physician. I think that's Sirach 38 for yourself because I'm, I'm running short of time. But let's go to Sirach chapter 2 and verse 10. And it says, look at the generations of old and see, did ever any trust in the Lord? Did anybody ever trust in Yahweh and was confounded? Or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? Or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? The most I would not despise you if you call upon him. He would not leave you if you call upon him. Because that shows forth your faith and belief in him, man. A lot of these Christians and people that may, uh that people um you know make you fun of because you know they in sin or you know they you know they don't have all the knowledge and wisdom or you know they've been raised up in evil. A lot of them are gonna have uh have a better chance than a lot of Israelites because they have that faith, right? When they're back against the wall, who are you calling upon? Hey man, you gotta hey like some you gotta let go and let the most high, man. It's just what it is. Verse 11. For the Lord is full of compassion and mercy, long suffering, and very pitiful, and forgive of sins and save of in the time of affliction. Woe be to fearful hearts and faint hands in the center that goes two ways. So you're going two ways when you start. You, you saying all these scriptures, you believe in all these things, but when things going around in your life, you're not calling upon the most high, right? And you're fear, the Lord said, well, be the fearful hearts. Why? Because if you stay in that fear without hoping in the most high, hey, man, you don't believe in the most high. That's why he said, woe to it. That's why we got to put our mind there. That shows that hope and that belief. Verse 13, woe unto them that is faint hearted. You know, you, you giving up on the Lord because you don't think he can get you, save you out of uh, depression or anxiety or stress. For he believeth not, therefore shall he not be defended. That's why you see a lot of people that give up on these things, that give up fighting, give up calling upon the Lord during these times of stress, give up fasting, give up praying, give up, give up getting better, right? The Lord says he, they will not be defended. They get nothing but worse. They get worse and worse and worse, right? And the Lord says in verse 14, Woe unto you that have lost patience. And what will you do when the Lord shall visit you, man? You got to keep, you can't lose patience in the most high, man. Right? It's sometimes not an overnight battle. A lot of times it's a journey, man. And the Most High is bringing you to where he wants you to be. A lot of times with anxiety, stress, depression, anger, all these so-called emotions, these people call it, these spirits that the Most High uh, has out here are sent to make you better. The Most High loves those in whom he chastises, man. I can speak for myself. I've got better by overcoming certain things in my life like this, like anxiety and stress. You get better and certain things don't even bother me no more. Certain things when I first came into the truth that I was heavily attacked with, heavily um, a problem with me, I, those things don't bother me no more. Because I call upon the Lord, man. And I fear the most high that the much more because of those things. Right? So let's get Sirach chapter 47 and verse 2. It's a great precept too, man. I love this precept. And it says, and is the fat taken away from the peace offering? So was David chosen out of the children of Israel. He played with lions as with kids and with bears as with lambs. As just showing you from the beginning, um, David had a high, high belief in the most high. So far, he was he was with lions, with bears. How many men would do that, man? Hey, they wouldn't even do that because, they, you know, they, you know, they scared. But no, when you know the most high, he's had that high level of faith and belief in the most high. No matter what he was going through, he had that faith in the most high. That the most high was going to preserve him. Right? Verse 4. Slew he not a giant when he was yet but young? And did not he take away reproach from the people when he lifted up his hand with the stone and the sling and beat down the boasting of Goliath? For what did he do? For he called upon the most high God. He called upon the most high Yahweh, the Lord. And he gave him strength in, the, in his right hand to slay the mighty warrior and set up the horn of his people. So the people honored him with ten thousands and prayed him and praised him in the blessings of the Lord and that he and that he gave him a crown of glory. So you got to understand, man, that it's very mighty to call upon the Most High when you when you're um, in struggles or when you're in bad positions. Right. Because that shows forth your belief. And that's what David did. And look what all the Lord did for David. Because of that, when everyone else, they was, 
what is they doing? They trying to take it into their own hands. Even Saul, the king, everybody else. Um, you know, man, we can't do nothing with this man. Man, this man's too big. They think it carnally. But you got to think spiritual when you're going through these spiritual attacks, man. And call upon the Most High. For the Most High won't forsake you. Yahweh will not forsake you, man. If you believe that he is he, right? In the name of his only begotten son, Yahweh Shah. Let's get this real quick. Sirach 48, talking about Ezekiel. And it says, Ezekiel has fortified the city and brought in water. It's Sirach 48 and 17, Salaki. Ezekiel has fortified his city and brought in water into the midst thereof. He digged the hard rock with iron and made wells for water. And the time of Sennacherib came up and sent Rabs, Rabs, I can't never say this guy's name. Rabs, sees, and I might be saying it wrong, Salaki, if I am. And lifted up his hand against Zion and boasted proudly. Then trembled their hearts and hands, and they were in pain as women in travail. But they called upon the Lord, which is merciful, and stretched out their hands toward him. And immediately the Holy One heard them out of heaven and delivered them by the ministry of Isaiah. Right? So you got to understand, man. The Most High will deliver you. He'll hear you out of heaven immediately. Do you not believe in Yahweh and who he is? Praise him and exalt him in that way, man. For he will deliver you from all your pains, man, and all your stresses and all your anxieties and all your, and people can say you got all type of disorders and uh, all type of things in your mental. The most I will deliver you from those things, man. Believe and call upon him, man. Show forth your faith. And our God, the God is full of power, mercy, and grace, and honor. Right? What better time to show when you're going through these things, man? When you deep and low, show forth that belief, man. And it says, verse 21, he smote the host of the Assyrians, and the angel destroyed them. For Ezekiel had done the thing that pleased the Lord. What was it? Did he they please the Lord? Did they call upon the Most High? They believed him. Right? And was strong in the ways of David, his father. He was just like David, his father. How was he different? Because he called upon the Most High. When, when everything looked bad, he called upon the Lord. This is what Ezekiel did, right? Um, and it says, and was strong in the ways of David, his father. And Isaiah, the prophet, was the great and was who was great and faithful in his vision, had commanded him, man. So you understand, man, the Most High will look out for you, right? Believing that he'll look out for you, man. Don't just let them, don't wallow in that stress and wallow in that depression and wallow in the anxiety. You see these clouds and trees behind me, right? The Most High takes care of them, right? It has to move according to their orientation, right? According to their schedules. He'll do the same thing with you. The Most High, it, rain don't last forever, man. Especially when you calling upon the God that can remove the rain and make it sunny, right? <laughs> Let's get this. Sirach chapter 13 and verse 14. It says, love Yahweh all thy life and call upon him for thy salvation. You got to call upon the Most High to deliver you from those situations, man. These things, it's, it's no easy. There's no easy route. These are heavy, heavy, high demons. So high that everyone deals with them. A lot of people deal with them and they call them emotions. These aren't emotions. These are spirits that are sent on your day-to-day -day basis that you have to overcome. And you can only overcome it through the source that sent them in the first place, which is the most high. Um, Sirach chapter 51 and verse 10. It says, I called upon the Lord, the father of my Lord that he would not leave me in the days of my trouble. And in the time of the proud, when there was no help, man, when you got no help, there's trouble all around you. I will praise thy name continually and will sing praises with thanksgiving. And so my prayer was heard, for thou savest me from destruction and deliverest me from, e from the evil time. Therefore, I will give thanks and praise thee and bless thy name, O Lord. You gotta bless the most high, man. He'll deliver you in these times of stress and anxiety. And when you're going through those things, don't just get deeper and deeper in it. Call upon the Lord to deliver you from it. When you're in a time of anger and stress, believe, right? Believe in the most high, then he'll take him away. 
2 Maccabees chapter 12 and verse 15. It says, wherefore Judas with his company, calling upon the great Lord of the world, who without rams or engines of war did cast down Jericho. The most I didn't have no engines of war to cast down the walls of Jericho. Read about Joshua and see that the Lord uh, had us walk around there seven times, right? And then with a great war, uh, the most I commanded us that the, the buildings, the, uh, the um, walls fell down, man. You don't think the Lord can take down these walls in your life, man? When you call upon him and believe in him? Did he cast down Jericho in the time of Joshua? Gave a fierce assault against the walls and took the city by the will of God and made unspeakable slaughters in so much that a lake two furlongs broad near adjoining thereunto being filled full was seen running with blood. So the most high, man, he could, and Jericho was a very mighty, powerful city, man, during that time, man. You're talking about one of the biggest cities in the world, right? Known and renowned for their walls and their strength and their army. When you call upon the Lord, man, these, these things can't, they, they can't. They hold not up against it, man. You got to call upon Yahweh, man. In the name of Son, Yahweh Shai. Second Maccabees, another count in Maccabees. Chapter 15 and verse 21. Maccabees seeing the coming of the multitude and the diverse preparations of armor and fierceness of the beast stretched out his hand towards heaven and called upon the Lord. When he seen all this stuff, he seen all these uh, armies that had uh, how much power they had. He knew that power to come against him wasn't going to come by his, from himself. He called upon the Lord. That work of wonders. Knowing that victory, victory cometh not by arms. But even as it seemeth good to him, he giveth it to such as are worthy. That, he ain't going to give it to you such are worthy when you call upon him. That's what makes you worthy. Not take it into your own hands. You know, you say, you know, you looking into Buddha, Buddhism, you taking yoga and all these things. Hey, look, man, call upon the most high and, 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 and flee from evil in your life and correct things in your life. And watch the wonders that the most high can do for you, even in your own life, even in these personal things that you think is just a part of you. Now, nah, this ain't this ain't just a part of you. You don't just get angry. You don't just get depressed. You don't just get stressed out and anxious. Right? These are all things that you can overcome. Right? But you gotta call you gotta call on the overcomer, man. Right? Therefore, 22. It says, Therefore, in his prayer, he said after this manner, O Lord, thou didst send thine angel at the time of Ezekiel, king of Judah, and didst slay in the host of Sirach. We were just talking about this, right? Ezekiel, the king, and how he was delivered. And the Lord sent him Isaiah. Right and send them. Hey, it had, the Lord, hey man, the Lord does all type of man of things for you, man. And keep reading, and it says, um, "O Lord, thou didst send thine angel in the time of Ezekiel, king of Judea, and did slay in the host of Sennacherib a hundred and four score and five thousand. The Lord killed a hundred and forty five thousand people, man, with angels. Ooh, man, no, hundred eighty five thousand. My bad, hundred eighty five thousand people." The Lord killed with angels because this man, the Syrian king thought he was high and mighty and he had, he uh, was saying things against the Lord and that he uh, had conquered every other nation of people and that they was next on the list. And what did the Lord do? He delivered them because he knew he had no power and might up against that man. He knew the power and might had to come from the Lord. And that's what you got to do. The Lord can send angels and kill 185,000 men. And you read that story, man. That's a really mighty story, man. Imagine that, right? And this is verse 23. Wherefore now also, O Lord of heaven, send a good angel before us for a fear and dread unto them. And through the might of thy arm, let those be stricken with terror that come against thy holy people to blaspheme. And he ended thus. Then Nicanor and they that were with him came forward with trumpets and songs. But Judas and his company encountered the enemies with invocation and prayer. Right? So they was praying. And the whole they, they fighting they 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 coming up to the enemies they praying and, and got and calling upon the name of the Lord, so that the fight so that fighting with their hands and praying unto God with their hearts they slew no less than thirty and five thousand. Hey man, the Lord, the Lord does miracles, man, right? But where did it come from? It come it came from calling upon the Lord, man, praying the Most High with your heart, 
believing he can uh, overtake these things in your life. Believe in him. Let's get this Psalms chapter 31 and 24. Right? And I gotta I gotta get out of here here soon. Psalms 31 24. Be of good court courage, and he shall strengthen your hearts, all ye that hope in the Lord, man. So be of good courage, man. Believe in the most high, and he'll strengthen your mind. Because all these things are mental. All these things are these spirits that are attacking your mind, your heart is what they call it. Right? But the Lord can strengthen it. All ye that hope in him. He'll strengthen it if you hope in him. When you backed up hope in him, he'll strengthen you. Psalms 33 and 18. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy. The Most High has only got the eyes on the people that's hoping in his mercy. To deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. The Lord will do all this for you. If you start keeping that, and he, the Lord sending these things so you to start doing that in your day-to-day -day life. Sometimes the Lord got to push us a little bit, man. Hey, man, you don't even pray to me. You, I, you think you're going to be able to overcome all these things? You don't even pray to me, man. You don't even hope in me, right? 20, our soul waited for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. For our heart shall rejoice in him because we have trusted in his holy name. Let thy mercy, O Lord, be upon us according as we hope in thee. So we got hey, we got to hope in the most high, man. Right? Praying to him. Hope unto him. He'll deliver your soul from death, anguish. All these things you're dealing with, he'll deliver you from it. But you got to believe that he is he. Right? Psalm chapter 130 and verse 7. It says, let Israel hope in the Lord. For with the Lord there is mercy. And with him is plenteous redemption. The Lord can redeem you multiple times. I've lived that in my life. I can speak and bear witness, witness the Lord can redeem you, man, multiple times, man. And put these things in your life, like anxiety, stress, depression, to humble you. Because a lot of us walk in pride. A lot of us walk in pride thinking everything, you know, you read a couple scriptures, you got friends, you keeping a couple laws, you think you good. Well, Lord, so no, you're not good. You got to hope upon me, man. You're not righteous. And your might comes not from yourself. Verse 8, he shall redeem Israel from all his iniquity. So we got to call upon the Lord. Psalms 147 and 11. And I know I'm going through this fast, but I got to. It says, the Lord take a pleasure in them that fear him and those that hope in his mercy. The most I take a pleasure in those that when there's no other route. And that's what his anxiety and depression and stress makes you feel like, man, I'm down. I ain't got no other way out. You crying. You know, you, 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 you mean, you mean mugging everybody. Hey, it's redemption, right? We got to hope on the most high when there's no way out, right? For the Lord take a pleasure in them that fear him and those that hope in his mercy. That's what the most high loves. Like I said, if I could sum up the truth in, in a couple words, it's you calling upon the Lord when there's no other way out, right? You hoping in his mercy and grace because you know there's nothing else you can hope in. That's what the Lord wants to see. That's the love. That's the worshiping of him. That's the exalting of him that he's looking for you in your life. And even in your daily life. Right? Sirach chapter 14 and verse 2. And this is what we're going through with the, the, the depression and anxiety and stress. It says, blessed is he whose conscience have not condemned him. Who has not fallen from his hope in the Lord, man. So don't let your conscience condemn you. Your conscience have you feeling like, man, the Lord can kill me. I don't done all type of evil. I don't done all type of wrong. Oh, man, I don't done this and done that. And hey, man, and you, you, uh, you anxiety, you in depression. A lot of times that's your conscience con condemning you. But the Lord said, hey, don't let the conscience condemn you. Hope in him. Don't let your don't let uh, don't don't let um, your hope go away from in the most from the most high. Because the moment you do that, you you've left away from this truth. You left away from believing in him. Right. So trust in him. Romans chapter 12 and verse 12. And it reads, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation. So you got to be patient in these moments of tribulation. I think a lot of people, when they get angry, when they get stressed out, they go and kill somebody, shoot somebody, do all type of manner of evil, right? You know, you beeping the horn at everybody, road raising, crashing into people, right? Be patient in these moments of tribulation. Continue Continuing instant in prayer. So you have to be instant with that prayer. 
Just like when what the Maccabees were doing, right? When they was when they was going up against um, a, a mighty army, and they was praying. Hey, when we read earlier, the Lord said, "Hey, he'll instantly look out for you, man. He'll instantly when he hear you pray and you hope in him during your times of distress, the Lord will instantly get you right." I I witnessed it. I witnessed the Lord instantly help me out with these things that we're talking about here right now. So don't tell me it ain't possible. So don't tell me the, the don't tell me that the Lord who opened the red seas can't open these red seas in your life. Can't open these these emotions and things you think that uh believe that um you keep believing that these things are just in your genes. A lot of these doctors tell you, well, you know, this is just part of your genetic makeup. Nah, man. We're talking about the Lord that healed the blind, healed the sick, right? Cast down the walls of Jericho, man. The Lord can get you out of that anxiety, man. He can get you out of that stress. You got to believe in Yahweh and believe in his son who he sent to erase all your iniquities and your um, um, uh, your uh, sins so he can look at you in a way that's worth saving, right? Deuteronomy 31 and 6, and this is what we're talking about. Be strong and of good courage. We got to have that good courage and strong. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. And this was talking about other nations, but we got to not be afraid of anxiety, not be afraid of stress. Stop being afraid of death. Stop being afraid of all these pestilence. You walking around, got 25 masks on. Stop being afraid of uh, uh, these uh, uh, sicknesses, right? Stop being afraid of all these things that could come. Stop being afraid that you're going to do things wrong in your life and you made a mistake. And just trust in the most high, man, and hope and that he leads you in the direction. Right? That's all you can do. Trust in Yahweh. For the Lord thy God, Yahweh, your power, he it is that doeth go with thee. He will not fail thee nor forsake thee. The most high is not going to fail you or forsake you. Right? Believe in that. Romans 8 and 25. But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. We, hey, you, you can't see the most high delivering you from these things. But you got to with patience wait for it, man. These Some of these things ain't overnight, right? This ain't a quick fix. A lot of these people, they looking for genies, right? The Lord ain't no genie, man. He's helping you. He's giving you what you might not think you need, but you need it to be better, to overcome. So do it. And pray, praise him and have that faith in him. Romans 11 and 1. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. In those moments of anxiety, depression, stress, you see no way out. But you got to have that faith and that belief that the Lord will get you out of those things, man. And take them away. Trust in him. He won't, he won't depart from you, man. Whenever in history, the Lord said, whenever in history has someone called upon the Lord he, and the Lord didn't show mercy to him. Right? Man, we serve a great God, man. A God that's, that's beautiful. Exalt him while you on this earth, while you got breath in your lungs, right? While you can still have a tongue, while you have tongue. Don't wait till you dead on a, uh, on your deathbed, 95 years old, to try to exalt the Lord. Exalt him now while you living, right? And through that exaltation, he'll take and kill all these things and spirits you deal with, man, and all these emotions, right? And this is Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 23. Let us hold fast the profess profession of our faith. Sorry, I'm back, Israel. I had, so like I said, I got work going on. I'm about to have to get back here in a second. But it says, Hebrews 10 and 23, it says, Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. That means in these times when you're going through things, don't waver, man. Don't have do it. Don't be sitting there, oh, man, maybe the Lord can deliver me. I don't know if he's going to deliver me from this anxiety. I don't know if he's going to. Yes, he can. You just don't have that belief and you don't have that faith. And a lot of times, the most time, like I said, he puts these things in your life so you so you can believe, so you can understand and have that true hope in him. Because without it, you wouldn't. Let's just be honest. If you grew up and didn't have no problems, man, why would you seek the Lord? The Lord is putting these problems in your life for you to believe in him and trust in him. Right. Because those are the moments in which you need him. Right. And then you can show forth this glory and know about him. This is Proverbs 28 and 26, right? And this is my last precept, and I got to go, right? I love you, Israel, but I got to get to work. But I hope 
this edifies Israel. Proverbs 28 verse 26. He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. So if you start trusting in your own mind and thinking in your own ways and believing that, hey, man, I, if I just get high and get drunk, I can get out of this. Man, that's not, no, man. You trusting in your own mind. You think you can get your, deliver yourself from these things? No, you can't. It says, but whoso walketh wisely shall be delivered. And what's walking wisely? Trusting in the Most High. If you trust in the Most High, you'll be delivered from the same. Believe in the Most High, Yah Yahweh, and the name is only begotten Son, Yahweh Shah, and He will deliver you. And we know He will. And we believe He will. And I pray for all the brothers and sisters that watch this video that He delivers you in your everyday life, man. He delivers you in the name of Hamashiach Yahweh Shah, man. That He delivers you from all the things you're going through, even the small things in your life, right? That He delivers you and allows you to get better. That we may all be better servants of Him. Because we all need to serve him in better ways. Right? In the name of, in the name of only begotten son, Yahweh Shah. Um, but with that, I'm going to give all honor, glory, and praises to Yahweh. Because he's worthy of it. As y'all seen by this video, give him praises through your day. Right? You know what I'm saying? Even when you're just sitting around, give him praise, praise the Most High. Thank him for his son. Right? Pray, for, pray to him in the name of his son. Right? And exalt him to that level. In the name of only begotten son, Yahweh Shah. Um, but thank, I uh, hope Israel get edified through this, through the spirit. Hope, um, you know, uh, some of these scriptures helped you build throughout your day. Read these scriptures when you're going through these moments, man. Pay attention to them, right? Focus in on them. This is for your learning, right? And a lot of times when you're in these moments, you need to go back to these things. But with that, got to get back to work. All praise to the Most High and bid Israel Shalom and Kwame Asherah.